with x squared, or I mean, sorry, x to the 1 half, which is the square root of x, the graph we get starts at 0, 0, and goes up like that, almost as if it was half a parabola on its side. And we find that as we take larger roots, the graph gets pulled down towards the x-axis. A thing to notice about this graph is that the domain is only from 0 to infinity. And the reason for that is because of our radicand. And we know that we cannot take the even root of a negative number. At least not if we want to have a real number as our solution. For odd roots, what we end up getting is a graph that looks very similar to our odd exponents, but it looks like the, the graph has been turned on its side. And we see again that as we take a larger and larger root, the graph gets pulled closer and closer to the x-axis. Okay, other functions. We have an absolute value function. The absolute value function, we know that as long as x is positive, that it looks very similar to y equals x. We'll just have a straight line that goes up. However, when x is negative, the absolute value makes the output positive. So we get a line that goes straight up in the other direction. This is our absolute value function. Now, if we were to Maybe take the absolute value of 2x. Our graph gets skinnier. The absolute value of 3x, it gets even skinnier. But know the red one. The red one is the parent function. That's the one you just have to know. Next, we'll talk about floor and ceiling functions. What the floor function tells me and it's a special notation where it looks like a bracket, but the bracket only has the floors. And what this says is that whatever I plug in for x, so say I plug in 6.5, the floor function picks the integer that is the closest integer but below 6.5. So in this case, it would be 6. I have 7.2. The floor function tells me it's 7. Negative 3.9, the floor function says it's negative 4. What the graph of this looks like is this. So if I plug in 0, I get 0. And anything between 0 and 1 comes back as 0. There we go. 